Today we're taking a look at a cooler that claims to give you premium performance and features on a budget price. Hello folks and welcome back to Gadget Joe and today we're taking a look at an air cooler by the good folks over at Endorphy. Endorphy are a somewhat new company to the UK but they've been making serious waves with their products and company ethics too. I'm sure we'll see a lot more of their products on the channel in the future too. The cooler that we have in for review here is their Fera 5 ARGB. It's a tower form air cooler with a large heatsink and 120mm fan, an implemented ARGB that can be picked up for around a £35 price point. It has support for an extensive range of CPU sockets as seen here, and the ability to work on even older formats such as AM2, FM2 and FM1 to name a few is very useful if you run an older system still and you just want to upgrade your cooling facilities. Unboxing the Fira 5 is a somewhat simple affair with a standard brown box with information dotted around the sides. Inside you get the cooler itself shrouded by two more boxes either side. In the first box we get the accessories which includes all the mounting hardware you would need for insulation and some thermal paste. The second box contains one of their Fluctus 120 PWM ARGB fan. Yes I'm aware that they've spelt the name wrong on the box but that's an easy mistake to make and rectify so we'll just move on from that. The Fluctus fan is a rather nice looking fan with an aggressive spike fan detailing to it. Next we have a little book of kryptonite for men. Okay it's a user manual in full colour too I might add. Finally, we have the cooler itself. The cooler has silver heat sinks all the way with an aggressive spite pattern to it, similar to the fan along the sides of it. The end is a matte black panel with an Endorphi logo that covers a plastic frosted piece that houses the ARGB light within. It feels really well built and solid. There are four copper heat pipes on the Ferro 5 for maximum heat dissipation and a somewhat relatively compact little contact plate at the bottom made by flattening the heat pipes, which technically could be somewhat effective by being in direct compact with a CPU for cooling rather than a traditional contact pad. Installation of the Ferro 5 ARGB is super simple. It's literally a case of selecting the right screws for the universal mounting bracket included and securing it into place. Be sure to make sure you have the Endorphi logo facing the right way in your case too, as you can see here. Attaching the fans is super simple to do and doesn't require them to be done before you install it. They include four wire fan brackets allowing you to connect for 120mm fan after installation. What's more is you can choose which side to have the fan, if you do so wish to have it on the opposite side. And you also have the hardware ready to go if you wish to add a second fan too. Once it's installed it looks absolutely fantastic as you can see and the implemented ARGB looks great. You can connect it to the motherboard or to an ARGB controller. Or if you don't have either of those they do include what they call a nano reset ARGB controller meaning you can then control the lighting through that. It's a very nice little touch. The LEDs are nice and subtle. They shine through nicely on the fan and the illumination behind this top plate here, highlighting the Endorphi logo, is pretty effective too. They have what feels like an endless amount of RGB lighting modes, which I'll show next. If you don't want to see the lights and want to go straight to the performance figures of the Fira 5, then simply scroll to this point of the video below.
as you can see, the light show is pretty impressive. So that's the aesthetics over and done with. Now let's get to the real test, and that's the cooling capabilities. It's one thing to have a nice looking cooler, but if it can't perform where it matters, then what's the point? The test system that we use for the cooler is our test bench, which is an Intel i7-13700KF 16 core, 24 thread CPU on an ASRock Z790 Tai Chi Lite with 48 gigabytes of Patriot Viper 5 Elite GDR5 and an inner chill RTX 3080 Ti. We compared the results directly with both AIO and air coolers, some smaller, some larger, for a variety of results. To begin with, we tested all coolers under the 3D Mark CPU profile benchmark, which puts the CPU under stress to find out its performance scores across 16, 8, 4, 2, and single core benchmarks. This then causes the CPU to utilize all cores and really push it, which in turn transfers the heat from the CPU. The Fera 5 performed very well here with 50.3, putting it very close to the much more premium Be Quiet high-end coolers, massively outperforming the John's Boat low profile and stock cooler, and even outperforming multiple 240mm AIOs on test two. I then ran a couple of CPU intensive games in the form of Fortnite and Cyberpunk 2077. I first ran Fortnite in 1080p at ultra high quality settings for roughly 30 minutes, and the results were very similar with a Fera hitting 57.1 degrees. Running Fortnite once again at 1440p this time at ultra high for 30 minutes started to push the Fera a little bit more. It hit 61.3 degrees, but still remained somewhat consistent with its place amongst the coolers tested. Finally, we ran Fortnite at 4K quality at ultra high for 30 minutes, and naturally we saw an increase again up to 65.1, but the pattern remained strong again. Cyberpunk proved a little bit more challenging for the coolers over Fortnite. Naturally so, with all the additional rendering and shaders needed. We tested it for one hour at 1440p at ultra settings, and this time we really started to push for Fera 5 with it hitting 70.8 degrees, but it still handled it superbly well. Finally, I set to render a 4K 30 minute video using DaVinci Resolve. Video rendering is primarily CPU intensive, newer systems and graphics cards can help with the final stages of rendering, but predominantly it's a CPU intensive task. The Fera 5 this time did climb a little bit higher than its usual curve, comparative to the rest of the coolers, but still managed a respectable 54.5 degrees. And that's the testing complete. The Endorphi Fera 5 ARGB held its own very competitively, even being relatively close to the high-end, high-priced tower coolers on test with much higher TDPs. In fact, it's even beat a couple of 240mm AIOs we have previously tested which strongly backs up the argument I've made for a long time that larger tower coolers are still very efficient at cooling thanks to the extra surface area and direct fan cooling they provide. Granted, these results will change vastly depending on your setup, the components you use, and even the case you have it in, or the room you have it in. So these won't always be accurate readings for what you may experience, but as a whole, they are tested in a structured manner with the same test bench and conditions for all coolers here to provide a more accurate overall picture of the performance curve of the coolers tested. But all I can say is that I'm super impressed with this little cooler. It's offered some really competitive cooling temperatures and it stayed super silent too, thanks to that Fluxus fan included. If you're looking for a high performing cooler that doesn't break the bank, then this is a solid option to look at for just £35. Obviously, tower coolers are not to everybody's taste. They do look quite large and bulky, and in general, they take up a lot more space inside your case. In fact, this one sits at 155 millimeters in height, putting it among one of the taller coolers. So make sure that you have the space allowances in your case before you hit buy on this one. Aesthetically though, they do a great job of making it look pretty smart. It's not a premium product by any means, so it does still have a little bit of a budget look to it with the silver heat sinks and copper pipes, etc. But the ARGB helps to take your eyes away from that and gives off a pretty impressive little light show. Performance to price, however, makes it a very, very appealing consideration. So if you're in the market for a new cooler or want to upgrade from the included stock coolers, which are shockingly poor, and you have the space to do so, and the £35 ender fee, Fera 5 ARGB definitely deserves a space on your shortlist of options. As always, I will leave a link down below so you can check it out for yourself and purchase one if you do want to do so. Whilst you're down there, please don't forget to click like and subscribe 
so that it helps out the channel to grow to give you more content like this we have also got lots of giveaways and other exciting content on the channel as well so if you want to check that out now please go ahead and do that and that's pretty much it so this has been my review of the Enderfee Fera 5 ARGB and I've been Gadget Joe and until next time I'll see you later. Goodbye.